we've partly got this sort of long-term view to the long future when we're all going to have to modify the way we use our, our energy to fit more with the environment and yet also end up with things which are in the short term meaningful and valuable here. There being some sort of talking point would be important for to get people uh, thinking about the project. Well, getting them engaged in for it right from the, the word go. As researchers, I feel it's very important for us to be there on the island conducting this research. We only really move forward when we have engagement with the community because it means the development of appropriate technologies. Tairi has a, a uniquely accessible energy situation which allows us to explore different scenarios and explore people's relationships with energy. The insights we could draw from this project will be applicable on a much larger scale in the future. So the opportunity on the island is to gain some insights into this from the people of Tairi through collaboration, through um, these interventions that we're trying to develop and how that may even be then taken and spread further afield. As a place, Tarias, this very raw beauty and energy and grabs you immediately. We felt intrigued about the island, but we were very much aware we knew nothing about it. So as researchers, we felt as strangers to moving into a new territory. And in order to, to do something meaningful, we needed to understand more about the island and its people. I think uh, growing up in Tyree gives you a real sense of community. It's a really good, safe environment to grow up in. Um, there's a lot of culture and music and intergenerational stuff that you wouldn't necessarily get in urban areas. The ones from the island can always just chat <laughs> naturally, and I think that's a really nice uh, kind of thing just to come naturally from where you've grown up. And I think you just see that all the way through the community. There are between six and seven hundred people living on town. There's almost 56 community groups, almost all of which are voluntary. And that just shows out of such a small population how many people are willing to give up their time to just get on with stuff, uh, even though it's a small place. There's just hundreds of stuff that people are making for people to do. I think the reason we're here on Tyree um, is that what we see is a community on the edge of the conventional infrastructure uh, where they really work together and take the initiative to do new things. So in energy terms, they've got together, they've built a community wind turbine and that's delivering money and energy to the community. So the energy infrastructure on Tyree is, is really interesting. Um, although they're quite a remote island, there's a cable that links the island back to the mainland via coal. Um, so, the, so they really do depend on the national grid to underpin the energy they use here. And although Tilly, which is a 920 kilowatt turbine, ac actually can produce pretty much most of their needs to deal with the variability in the wind, they have to have that grid to kind of fill in the gaps. So here we are inside the base of the turbine, not a place many people come to. This is a culmination of five years of very hard work by a lot of people, thousands of hours of voluntary time. Utility generates not just power, but it generates hope and potential for an island, for a community to, to survive on its own in, in a harsh economic climate. So one of the real issues about energy on the island is, is the vulnerability of that undersea cable. So when that cable breaks, 
they have a big diesel generator, maybe a three megawatt diesel plant that they can kick in within about 20 minutes. And then this is providing the energy for the island until he really, the wind turbine is really just on tick over at that point. So one of the things they need to, to plan for is, is how can they become more self-sustaining in energy terms and less dependent on that link to the mainland. So the opportunity with renewables is to think this is a, a time varying source of energy. It, sometimes the wind is strong and there's plenty of energy, sometimes more than they need and sometimes there's less. What can we do with when there's excess energy that would really benefit the community here? So if we think about how we use energy now, it's on demand. We think of energy as, as an endless resource. It's like a tap that never runs dry. You plug in, you use it whatever time of the day, and you don't really think about your relationship with that energy. What we're moving to is a world where it's much more about the supply of energy. So renewables, there are times when there's plenty of energy and you could start to think about what can we do with this opportunity, this gift of, of green, of free energy that we can use on, on the island in this case. Um, and I really, what the project's about is understanding how to build that link with the energy and, and where it comes from. We do have wind almost all the time. It's sort of constant. There's ways of adapting and living with the wind you just have innately when you've grown up here. I mean, everything's got to be shaped around it to some extent. You have to sort of just accept that you're not in control. The weather is the boss. The reason why we as a project are on Tyree is because Tyree represents almost a frontier, that sort of hybrid position between on demand and on supply. The situation which Tyree is in, they're generating their own community energy, but they're also using energy from the grid. We feel that they, being the experts of their own experience, can actually teach us their relationship with energy, and how strong that relationship may be, and does it have any connection with that environment that surrounds them. Part of this visit to Tyree has involved us developing devices to help explore that relationship. And as a result, we felt like it was a very good opportunity to engage with the younger members of the community on Tyree. But we're also trying to engage their parents and their guardians as well, and trying to get them interested and drawn into the project. We had a Hackett session where we built these small energy detectors. These devices were made predominantly using 3D printing technologies. They kind of resemble what a magnifying glass looks like. We were trying to make them into energy detectives. So as a result, inside the, the sort of the, the, the glass part of the magnifying glass, you have a little propeller. And when that blows, it actually drives this little meter. But you also have a little solar panel on the back, which again, when you point it up at the sun, it actually reflects how much energy is in that sunlight using that little meter at the front. I think it's um, really good um, as a link between the real people who live here and the young people who live here and the aspirational sort of ideas that, that develop our technological advances. They thought that it was fun, it was engaging, um, they learned some things that they wouldn't have learned and had an opportunity to engage with some pieces of equipment they'd never engaged in. And um, an interesting opening into science for them that they may have never have had the opportunity to see. Living here through the winter, you come to expect a limitation to a range of different things. It's something that you just adapt to. You have to plan in advance. 
and I think also you have to be able to just go with the flow and not get too upset about it if it doesn't work. We're trying to get people engaged with our project, with On Supply. So although there's many instances where research is put into society, there's not enough of society being put into research. And I think it's very important that we as scientists engage with the people that we are researching but also researching with and that's because that's where the most important research questions come from. From all of these visits to Tyree we've slowly been building up this, this picture of the island and although this picture will never be complete compared to someone who's lived there for many many years I think we can say that we're, we're starting to, to work our way towards a solution or a technology or some kind of process that we feel would be appropriate for the island, for Tyree. There's something really powerful on Tyree. In some ways it's, it's not an island, it's a metaphor for the future. And now we're really turning our focus to, to what lasting legacy could even a short project like this have here that's meaningful for the community.